Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and you know what time it is and we're gonna get our midweek magic on. This week's midweek magic is into the future as a new alchemy set is ushered in. This of course being the first alchemy small set that we've seen in roughly eight months. That's right, the last one was Phyrexia All Will Be One. So this new set has a big defining aspect on the way the format is going to be treated probably over the course of the next year. Uh, of course, this particular event brings a bunch of pre-constructed decks, so we're going to be talking about several different things in this video. The first, of course, being the state of the current Alchemy meta, uh, what we can expect from this set, and how to best approach the event itself. But before we get into all that, allow me to do the awkward thing and promote the channel. A while back, one of my viewers was kind enough to point out that we are the only channel putting out timely midweek magic content. So be sure to subscribe right here at the Planeswalker Stronghold for all of your future midweek magic needs because we will be bringing you a deck list or strategy every single week. So what do you say we put all this aside and just get to that? It would be difficult to talk about alchemy this year and not talk about the substantial shift in free-to-play resources that we have seen Wizards of the Coast make uh, away from standard playable cards and towards alchemy. And rather than simply present my own opinions about this shift, I recently did a survey amongst our community to try and gauge how the community was feeling about this shift and well the overwhelming response uh, 53 percent could be termed as negative uh, people stating that they never liked alchemy and don't like free-to-play resources being diverted to it or in some cases um, saying that this doesn't affect the amount that they're going to be playing Alchemy, whether that was a lot or a little remains to be unseen, uh, but they are planning on buying less Alchemy since they are presumably going to continue getting these cards to some degree for free. Uh, only 20% found a positive response to this, uh, gauging from people that always liked Alchemy and appreciate the free resource shift, um, or people that uh, were not previously a fan of Alchemy, but now feel more vested and open to playing Alchemy moving forward. Uh, roughly 27% of the remaining respondents were neutral. Uh, they had been and remained neutral to Alchemy and felt like there was very little impact on their future behavior from this resource shift. So based upon that response from the community and my goals to personally have fun and create good compelling content, Alchemy will remain a very small portion of my content moving forward and subsequently my personal play. Now, of course, if you would like to see this change, the very best thing you can do is get involved in the comments down below and let me know what you think positively about alchemy because of course as always around here you matter all right so let's start the conversation off here by talking about the current alchemy best of one meta on arena and if i may coin a phrase it's a bit of a mess um, mono red of course is the number one deck in the meta and beyond that, you really see just a couple of decks that are above 4%, um, about four or so that are in that three to four range. And then there's a ton of decks that are about two and a half percent of the meta. Uh, what is that? Like six different decks. Um, but really what's going on here, you'll see there's a lot of decks with black and
And sadly, the red deck configuration that we're seeing at the moment isn't particularly budget friendly. Uh, not necessarily because it runs an excessive amount of uh, rare or mythic cards, because, well, it really doesn't. Uh, but Monastery Swift Spear was not part of our starters, so you're probably spending wild cards on that if you weren't around last year. Um, Melt Through is an alchemy only card, as is Ranger's Firebrand and Fiery Inscription. Uh, in fact, all of these cards, with the exception of two copies of Electrostatic Infantry and a couple of Lightning Strikes and Volcanic Spites, are not necessarily things that you have in your new player experience. Um, even the standard legal cards, you are potentially having to draft or craft those cards. So maybe we end up with a more budget-friendly version for red, uh, but I'm not sure that I'm seeing it in the current meta. And beyond that, you really see just a couple of decks that are above 4%, um, about four or so that are in that three to four range. And then there's a ton of decks that are about two and a half percent of the meta. Uh, what is that, like six different decks. Um, but really what's going on here, you'll see there's a lot of decks with black and and really the reason behind that is two cards that are ultimately really defining the alchemy and to a lesser degree the historic meta that of course being the mythic colorless one ring and the mono black rare bowmaster uh, these cards singularly are in 60 percent roughly of the alchemy meta and nearly 40% of all decks are running one or more copies of both cards. So really the meta is all about these two right now. And this literally just in off the Monday announcements, they have done adjustments for both the One Ring and the Bowmaster. Uh, the One Ring added a mana to its activation cost and the Bowmaster lost its ETB trigger. Now, how much is that really going to affect the playability and overall dominance of these cards will remain to be seen, and uh, something that a lot of people are gonna be testing in this week's Midweek Magic event. Now, once you get past Mono Red and the ubiquitous Bowmaster ring decks that are out there in black, there's not a lot in Alchemy to talk about. In fact, the number two most played deck is the Phyrexian Legion deck that we talked about during our last conversation uh, about Alchemy. That's right, it's, it's almost 10% of meta. And I don't think we necessarily did that, but I think it happened for the same reasons that we talked about it. It was an inexpensive, inexpensive but very accessible deck that could help people conquer the uh, alchemy meta right now. In fact, it's 3% higher on its win rate than a ubiquitous mono red deck. And beyond that, then you just get into even smaller subsegments. Uh, there's only four decks that are pushing a 4% uh, meta mix. One of those is Mono White Soldiers, one of which is Azorius Soldiers, which is almost a card-for-card -card usage of the deck from the starters. And uh, rounding that out, of course, you've got a Mono Black Bowmaster-style deck and then a Rakdos Rat deck. Uh, beyond that, you have a ton of those Bowmaster decks. I mean, that's that's really what all of this stuff is, right up until you get down here to just over 1%, but with an 80% win rate, uh, you've got our beloved Brittany Green White Toxic deck, and then you just start getting into some experimental stuff, like uh, is it uh, Wizards is pretty good, uh, but only a 54% win rate, so uh, basically on par with what Mono Red is doing, but only a one and a quarter percent of the meta. Then you get uh, even more Bowmaster decks, and of course, don't forget, Sheldred is in black as well. 
and Meat Hook Massacre that was banned in Standard is also available with a slight tweak in Alchemy. Uh, you've got another Soldier's deck, uh, Boros Oil, and uh, well, look at that, more black. Uh, another Is It Wizards deck, again, with a win rate lower than, well, this is probably more of a prowess now that I'm looking at it, but not too far off, but also running the one, win, one ring in that deck. Uh, so just part of the collective issues and uh, it, just look at how many decks are here at like one and a quarter percent of the meta. I mean, it's, it's just all over everywhere. And if you notice the AI that evaluates the meta based on player data can't even give these decks names because they're so similar uh, over and over and over again, we, we just see it labeling it deck as opposed to trying to even give it uh, a color breakdown. It's, uh, it's really quite a cluster at the moment, and uh, now we're just going to add more cards into the mix. Now, as we begin the discussion of what you will and won't see in this 30-card small set alchemy release, um, in broad context, you see a pretty even color distribution, although we will talk about uh, some assets that lean well outside of that. And uh, also at this time, we have not seen an announcement as far as any sort of rebalance. But of course, blue has been kind of ubiquitously identified as, uh, well, I hate to say it, but unplayable in Wilds of Eldraine Limited. So don't be surprised if we see a major rebalance on that uh, card subset to make it stronger. Um, I don't necessarily think they need to make any of the other things weaker, uh, but we did talk about the Orcish Bowmaster as well as the One Ring that may see some sort of nerf moving forward. I think that's going to say a lot about how the folks at Wizards of the Coast are really thinking about and treating alchemy. Uh, are they really trying to balance the format? Because most people do feel like these things need to be addressed, uh, not just the format naysayers out there. Uh, fairies did get a little bit of love. Uh, rats, I did not see anything whatsoever that uh, contributed to a rats deck. Um, most of the other mechanical things did get some representation at various levels. Uh, so why don't we talk more specifically? So enough now about what we didn't get in the set. Let's focus on what we did get. And I had mentioned earlier that blue was probably positioned to need the most help overall in this set. And it definitely got some representation with no less than eight cards including an uncommon land, which I believe is a first for alchemy, uh, at least outside of the large sets. Uh, it also got no less than three multicolor identity cards, including uh, Grow Old Together as a green-blue, uh, High Fae uh, Freebearer, I think is what it was, um, in a Demir color palette, and then uh, Stormkeld Curator in a uh, Azorius Blue or White. Um, that Mythic, by the way, looks absolutely ridiculous, potentially. Um, but uh, that aside, um, we got a total of three uncommons, uh, four rares, and one Mythic, which appears to be a pretty normal proportion with what was going on with uh, the various colors and uh, distributions on this set. Based on the 29 cards of the 30 that I've been able to find, it doesn't appear that we got an uncommon that allows you to spell book out higher rarities. So potentially Wizards has identified that as a broken uh, concept, at least in certain formats like Artisan. Although we do get two substantial spellbook cards, uh, both of which touch upon blue. The first is Tome of Gadwick, a uh, rare equipment that when the equipped creature hits, you get to uh, conjure a random card from Gadwick's spellbook. 
And this has some pretty heavy hitters with uh, a rare like Brainstorm, a lot of card selection like Ponder, Consider, Slide of Hand, Preordain, Opt, Peak, uh, and then some real powerhouse game changers like Quicken. The spellbook accessed through Giant Secrets is equally impressive, uh, giving a lot of access to great cards like uh, All That Glitters, Curiosity, Celestial Mantle, Face of Divinity, Ethereal Tunnel, uh, many, many good cards. And that is what makes these spellbook cards so budget friendly, is it can allow a lot of different play experience to be added to your individual collection through one card and the subsequent wild card that would be associated with its acquisition. The rare land in the set, Captivating Crossroads, allows you to choose a color as it enters the battlefield and taps for a mana of that color. However, during the first three turns of the game, it enters the battlefield tapped if you were the starting player. Now, if I was interested in alchemy and thinking about investing a rare wild card in order to improve my mana base, I would be leaning personally more towards something like Thran Portal. Of course, not only is it playable outside of alchemy, but does very similar things as far as addressing mana bases for multiple decks. While black didn't really seem to get much love in this particular set, uh, not that it needed it, uh, red, which arguably equally did not need much encouragement within the alchemy format, did get some at least interesting things going for it. Uh, both Draconic Debut and Heir to Dragonfire seem to, uh, again, point to that undertone of Dragon's Matter in Mono Red. We saw some of this in the new player experience decks, the starter decks for 2024. And to be frank, I just kind of wrote it off. Um, but as we continue to see more and more along this line, uh, I do think it may become worth exploring at some point. The un Uncommon Draconic debut in particular, a sorcery speed X and red uh, deals X damage to any target and the next dragon creature spell you cast cost X less to cast. Um, if that isn't a dragon enabler, honestly, I don't know what is. Um, on the other end of the rarity spectrum, the mythic rare overcooked at uh, two and a red mana enchantment. Players can't gain life. Um, really red didn't need this. The mono white life gain decks that we usually see in alchemy are not very present in the format at the moment. Uh, and this will certainly not uh, do anything to encourage them. Um, beyond that uh, life gain inhibitor, it has celebration. At the beginning of your instep, create a food token. If two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, instead conjure a card named Food Fight onto the battlefield. And, uh, well, this almost looks like it's trying to, um, well, I hate to say force, but certainly encourage a probably mono-red artifacts Food Fight deck. And um, with this giving you Food Fight's uh, five plus in your deck, um, really it, it could do quite a lot because of course uh, one copy of Overcooked can conjure multiple copies of Food Fight and of course once you have multiple Overcooks in play you could just have tons of Food Fights going on in there and then even just a very small amount of artifacts could do the trick. Now, certainly the most personally interesting and possibly the most innovative thing added to Alchemy through this small set release is the Three Little Pigs deck. Uh, three uncommons aptly named First, Second, and Third Little Pig, uh, one of which is a utility creature, uh, a 2-2 two -two that uh, for one in a green slash white, can exile target artifact or enchantment activate only once? Uh, by the way, all of these are creature boars with a casting cost of one with a hybrid mana 
uh, between green, white, or black, depending upon the individual creature as you see it on screen. Uh, the second little pig, uh, interestingly enough, becomes your beat stick. It's a 2-3 uh, base, but for four additional mana, it perpetually becomes a boar spirit with base power toughness of 4-4 four, four and gains flying. Uh, you can only activate this if it hasn't already been activated. Um, the last one is, of course, the third little pig, the uh, black and green hybrid. Again, base stats of 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you conjure one or more other cards, the third little pig perpetually gets plus one, plus one. This ability also triggers if third little pig is in your graveyard. Um, kind of interesting uh, that they finally made a Conjures Matters card. Uh, could lead to entirely new archetypes, and the fact that it's hybrid really opens it up for a lot of different things. Uh, but of course, these three cards are not all. We also got a literal suite of Three Little Pigs Matters cards. Uh, led primarily by the Tricolor Drover of Swine, a 5-mana five 5-5. Five, five. When Drover of Swine ETBs, choose one. Conjure a card of your choice from the Three Little Pigs spellbook onto the battlefield, or return up to three target boar creature cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. And while this card is obviously built to work with the Three Little Pigs, don't forget, there are other boar creature cards, in particularly historic, that might be of uh, interest to this card. Also, we got the Mono Green Swine Rebellion, a rare sorcery for three mana. If you control three or more boars with different names, conjure each card from the Three Little Pigs spellbook onto the battlefield. Uh, if you control two or fewer boars with different names, conjure two cards of your choice from the Three Little Pigs spellbook into your hand, then put one of them onto the battlefield. And finishing out the trifecta is the Mono White uh, four mana enchantment, a Porcine Portent. When Porcine Portent ETBs, conjure a card of your choice from the Three Little Pigs spellbook onto the battlefield, and boars you control get plus one, plus zero. Uh, this Portent also comes with an adventure option, a black lend a ham. I love the, uh, the joke there. Uh, it's an instant adventure exile target creature. You gain one life for each boar you control. Uh, very interesting stuff there. And uh, I love the concept that they're doing here of creating a, uh, a very thematic deck within the alchemy archetype. Uh, however, uh, that having been said, the idea of maybe spending as much as 24 wild cards to put together this deck is very questionable in my mind, and I hope we get a chance to play with it in the event and uh, get an idea of if or how this deck comes together and what it ultimately should look like if we do uh, take the prerogative of building it. And as you can see, there are a lot of worthwhile boars here in Historic, most of which are green, the ones that I think are most worth taking a look at is uh, Ilgard, the Raised Boar, uh, as well as Yarsharn, Implacable Earth. Both of those have a, a lot of interesting nuances there. Uh, also worth looking at is Rag, Ragdaraga, Gorgut's Boss. Um, say that three times fast or at all. Uh, the absolute two best, uh, the ones that are most likely to get abused, are uh, end raise forerunners as they give an overrun effect to your creatures, allowing you to alpha strike, as well as a decimator of the provinces that has a very similar effect. If you were to resurrect these two alone out of the graveyard and have no other creatures or boars 
on your side of the battlefield. You can be swinging for 22 uh, trample haste and uh, half of that would have vigilance as well. Uh, so really a potential game breaker there. This of course brings us full circle to the midweek magic event. Uh, there's actually two coming up that are going to be alchemy based for the remainder of the month. Uh, the current October 10th through 12th into the future. Uh, we don't know exactly how many decks they are going to present, but I imagine it's going to be either four or five. This is also stated to be the more casual of the two events. So something like Three Little Pigs is much more likely to be here than in the October 24th through 26th Alchemy Letter Ladder Deck Showcase, excuse me. Um, those are going to be uh, five specific alchemy constructed decks. Uh, and uh, again, I believe those will be the more uh, competitive ideas. But of course, it would be somewhat uh, unlikely for me to tell you exactly what's going to be in this event because Wizards of the Coast is building the decks, not me. Uh, although, what I can do is give you some thoughts here, and uh, what we will be doing is jumping into the event immediately, uh, trying as many of the decks as we can, and if other folks within the community will help us out and do likewise and post the results, findings, and uh, impressions of the decks, we can very quickly identify the, uh, the best decks to be playing in order to finish the event as efficiently as possible, or the decks that seem to be the most fun, regardless of win rate. Um, things that I think might be coming here, uh, certainly we did have two different fairies cards, uh, Italian's Throne Guard, as well as a High Fey Prankster. Uh, so a fairies deck in one of the two weeks is very, very likely. Given the casual nature of today's uh, event, I think a deck built around the Spellbook mechanic, either using Stormkeld Curator or Tome of Gadwick, one of those or maybe a combination of the two within the same deck uh, might be quite likely for a casual concept sort of thing. Uh, also, I think a, a Red X deck using the Overcooked and uh, Food Fight cards is very likely to be there as a casual sort of thing. Uh, Steady Tortoise also gives us a good casual fun deck with the idea of the tortoise and the hare. Uh, also kind of feeds into the gruel uh, decks that are already rather popular within Standard. It gives us one more tool there. Of course, with it being an uncommon, it's also pretty budget friendly. Uh, lastly, I think the, uh, the other deck that you're likely to see is going to be one of the gold base uh, decks, whether that is the legendary Sir and Sir deck or a Knight's deck that we really haven't seen even in standard out of this set, somewhat surprisingly, or maybe something built around Jewel Mind Overseer with the Seven Dwarfs. That could even fit into like a Boros Food Fight deck as well. Certainly, we're going to see a good bit of Captivating Crossroads up in those decks. Uh, they are going to want to give a good impression of that. So people will use their wild cards to craft it for this uh, type of format. Um, now, let's take a few minutes and talk about ways to add these cards to your collection efficiently. And Arena usually gives us a couple of interesting ways of adding the alchemy cards to our collection. Uh, the first of which is the Alchemy Premier Draft. And this has been confirmed at the time of recording and will be available October 10th through the 17th. Uh, it basically runs just like a Wilds of Eldraine Premier Draft. Uh, but of course, any changes that they have made to blue or other cards may be reflected in this. And one common out of each pack is replaced by a card from the new alchemy set. Uh, at about 55% uncommons, 39% uh, for rares, and about 6% on mythics. 
So uh, the net result here is that this isn't a very efficient way to add alchemy to your collection, although it might be a very enjoyable way to enjoy the format, particularly if they have done any uh, good, uh, effective rebalancing of the Wilds of Eldrain limited format. Uh, the, the sad thing here is with only one card being alchemy, it really only takes one other person in your pod uh, that is trying to alchemy draft the event and uh, you end up getting much less than you would expect to. And the 10,000 gold investment is very hard to recoup as far as alchemy value. And while buying alchemy packs is an ever-present and, uh, well, reasonably efficient way to add alchemy cards to your collection, be on the lookout for an alchemist bundle. Uh, this has not yet been confirmed at the time of recording, but the option to buy 20 alchemy packs for 15,000 gold represents a significant uh, discount on the packs of about 25% and will probably net you an additional golden pack as this 20 pack purchase does contribute towards your golden pack count. Um, also, they will probably offer at least one discounted alchemy pack. The expected rate right now is about 850 gold. That will probably be two or three weeks after the initial release, so probably around the end of October early November. Be on the lookout, don't miss out. And hey, just in case you didn't catch all that, Matt would like you to know that the deck list that we discussed in this video is going to have a link down in the doobly-doo to take you over to Etherhub, uh, along with a link to any other alternative list that you might wish to consider. He only asks that you give it a little like thumbs up when you're over there checking out the deck list. And I plan on live playing this event on Wednesday at 11 a.m. over on my Twitch channel. So definitely stop in and check it out. Because the Stronghold is so much more than just a YouTube channel and you can find links to all of our other social media outlets in our profile. Because at the end of the day, we're all budget players. And as a community, we're stronger together. So like, comment, subscribe, follow, do all those things to show a little love. It's appreciated more than you know.